I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about the definition of an abstract vector space in algebra. Now, vector spaces play in a very important role in abstract algebra, so let's just talk about a brief definition as to what a vector space actually is. Now, a vector space is a set of vectors, and anytime we think about vectors, we think of the letter V, of course, but uh, we're going to talk about capital V. That's the set V of vectors, and we're going to talk about little v for uh, little vectors, so in each individual vector. Now, what that basically means here is, is in order for you to have, to have a vector space, you have to have two operations that are in place. You have vector addition, which is denoted by the addition symbol, and then you have scalar multiplication, which is denoted by simply a dot. Now, in terms of vector addition, it has to satisfy these following properties. It has to follow the commutative property, the associative property. It also has to have what's called an additive identity. Now, an additive identity means that there's a zero element. Now, I know this sounds kind of weird that uh, because it may sound like common sense that zero would actually belong, but believe it or not, zero actually does not belong in certain sets of vectors depending on how it's defined. But um, it's a little bit weird that way. Now, it also must have an additive inverse. Okay? Now, what that means here is for every vector v, little v, it's supposed to have negative v as well that belongs in it. So if the negative v does not belong in this set, then it wouldn't fit under the vector addition. So what that tells you here is if negative v is in it, then you can add the two vectors together, and that'll give you 0 both ways. Again, it sounds kind of obvious, but not every set, how it's defined, will have the negative additive inverse, if you will. Now, with scalar multiplication, it's got its own set of properties that it has to satisfy. It's got to be closed, closed under scalar multiplication. It has to satisfy the associative properties. It also has to satisfy the distributive properties the distributive laws that you and I have seen under ordinary algebra. But it also has what's called a unitary law or unitary property in that it has to have the element 1. So I know it sounds kind of weird you know, to, have, to make sure that 1 belongs in a set of vectors, but again, it all depends on how the set of vectors is defined. Not every set of vectors contains the element 1. So how the 1 operates is that you can take the 1 and multiply it by any little vector and get that vector back. So in summary, if a, vector, if a set of vectors satisfies all these properties under vector addition and scalar multiplication, it is that of a vector space. So I'm Jimmy Chang, and that answers the question, what is an abstract vector space in algebra?